Well, hey there, everyone. This is Barry's Best Hunting. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana. All right, folks, today it is a beautiful evening. It's about 85 now. Today is September 29th. We're at the end of the month. Beekeeping is rapidly just winding down to nothing. So the plan for today is go in here and look at some of these doubles. I never did go back through them all after I assessed the singles. So I got to thinking I'm not going to dig through them. Um, what I'm going to do is go assess populations, take a look at the top of the nest, and if they're doing fine, maybe pull a frame or two and move on. And uh, we're going to also apply Super DFM. We'll talk about that a little bit more as we go. I want to go ahead and get the smoker going, get suited up, and um, we can discuss what I'm doing. But uh, we're at the point now where I'm seeing goldenrod start to bloom. I don't know how much nectar is going to come off because of our terrible drought conditions. But we have finally gotten more rain again, so things are looking up for that. Hopefully that's got some nectar in it. If it doesn't, I can bulk up the light highs. I did not go ahead with the one-to-one. -one. I was going to open feed, but you know, they were bringing in nectar on those singles inspections, and I don't want to overload them. The only reason I wanted to feed was really to get Hive Alive on board. I wanted to put some Hive Alive in there. So I may still open feed, I'm going to see, but I don't know if the golden rod's bringing in nectar by if they take the one-to-one. -one. But for sure, there will be some pollen coming in. We've had years where golden rod comes in just as beautiful as can be, and we've seen no nectar. But we've also had years where they've loaded it in. So it's all dependent on how much rain you had a month prior. We hadn't had much. So we're going to see. But uh, uh, I'm not. I'm kind of out on what I want to do. I really want to get some hive live on board the hives, but at the same time, they're loading up nectar now. And I'm seeing flowers in the ditches and things, so maybe no need to even bother wasting the sugar. Just wait till the end of October, see who's light, who hasn't loaded up, who hasn't bulked up, which should be more than less than half a dozen. And uh, throw them some two to one, bring their weight up. So here we are on the scene with the Super DFM in hand. This is a probiotic, basically, folks. Different than an antibiotic. Uh, so the bees are moving and shaking. They're doing pretty good. Doing a little bit of flying. Makes me think they're bringing in some nectar. So we're going to just... We looked at this one already. This is actually wasn't a single. This is the one we showed the great... Oh, man. We showed the uh, great improvement on from the mites. Uh, super happy with this hive. You got bees crowding the top like that. Usually there's beetles up top. So I'm going to put the Super DFM down over the brood nest. And I'll tell you a little bit why I chose to grab this stuff. Oh, I got a nice amount of honey up top. And here's what we're going to do. That's a nice cluster in the middle. Happy with that. <coughs> a little windy. Let's throw a little smoke over top. They've made a nice comeback. Takes a tablespoon of this stuff. All right, so what's in it? There's sucrose in it. So right off the bat, you know, that's what's gonna help them consume the stuff. And probiotics. The deal with probiotics. There's a lot of when it comes to humans doing probiotics, there's a lot of literature out there. For and against. Some saying it doesn't prove anything. I don't know. But I'm not a person in these in this whole beekeeping thing that just jumps on stuff. People start talking on YouTube. I watch. I watch closely. I don't just jump right on the newest thing or the greatest thing, the greatest thing. Because a lot of times people will get stuff like, I can tell you like Hive Alive. I wanted to get it on my bees because I've read good things about it. But just because somebody uses it and says it's the greatest thing ever, I don't have a measurable success necessarily. That takes a couple years worth of seeing a difference in how you keep bees and seeing a better result. And I don't have that. So I can only go by what I see people using, saying, doing, things like that, and what I read. So I don't just jump on things, I check it out. So I talked to the Super DFM people at the conference in Sevierville last year, and you know, researched a little bit, read a little bit about it, went to their site, 
searched some stuff about it, not a lot out there, but uh, said, well, you know what? I might be willing to give this stuff a try. So we were just recently at the conference in Slidell, the Be Alive Comfort conference, and I do thank the Bee Commander for allowing me to attend. He invited me. I appreciate it. I was only over, able to go for two-thirds of a day on Saturday. Well, the lady was there at her table. I forget her husband's name now. He, he did a great job. Earl, I believe his name was. He did a great job uh, at the conference as a speaker. I was talking to her about it, and then after that, I went into Bob Benny's lecture, and lo and behold, he had started using his stuff and had good things to say as far as what he believes about it. And um, I had already bought a pack, so I'm glad I did, because I'm sure a bunch of people went in and bought it after he talked about it. Very neat to listen to Bob talk about where he's kind of transitioning his operations to as far as no antibiotics, different treatments for mites and things like that. Very interesting. But we're going to try putting this probiotic on. It's supposed to be done every 30 days. What I'll do is do it, or she said at critical time would be at least get it on the fall. So that's what I'm going to do is put it on the fall here, and then I'll pick some up at the Bee Expo in Louisville this year. Hopefully at a discount, and I'll pick up enough to really maybe not do it every 30 days through the season, but maybe every 30 days up until we start pulling in honey and maybe in the dearth. We'll see if it helps. I haven't been in this hive at all. Gosh, they got, they got a good heavy box of honey. Now that's a nice looking nest, looks like. And so much as I'd like to get the hive alive in them, I don't know if I really want to keep piling nectar in on them. This is bee bread, so this is the edge of the nest. They're really irritated with me, but. So my queen is laying this frame, it's all full of eggs. Not a lot of cat brood in this colony. So I'm thinking she's coming out of the dirt. She's uh, starting to build back up. Got a little bit of time to do that. But they don't care for the camera, but this colony is pretty stout. Um, they're just split between like five frames up and down. Not a lot on the outside. Not bad. Not bad, which is, this is about normal for what comes out of the dirt for me, so I'm happy to see that. I don't do a lot of supplementing in the dirt. I don't do any supplementing in the dirt if they're, unless they're just going to starve. So, for me, that's normal. And that's it. That's what I'm going to do today. So, what are we talking about when we're talking about probiotics? We've got antibiotics. And what those mean is anti-alive or anti-life meaning you're killing bacteria obviously we know an antibiotic kills bacteria probiotics on the other hand promote or are good bacteria and if you read the they're found in yogurt a lot and if you read the ingredients on this there are some of the same probiotics in there. The lactate, whatever one, there's several in there. This was our single we looked at. It's actually pretty heavy. I think I'm gonna pull the feeder. I'll tell you that, but I just spilled syrup everywhere. Huh, they're not done. So we're going to leave the feeder on because there's syrup in there. And that's what we're going to do with that. So they're not taking the syrup anymore, so that you know what that tells us. Right? They got something coming in. So again, probiotics are the pro-living, pro-life, pro-bacterial. And you know, you'll hear arguments out from the outside whether probiotics are really beneficial or what. And, and I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is. For humans, they promote them as gut health and boosting the immune system. So these definitely will not take care of anything viral. So that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump some of this stuff on hives. I'm gonna look at a few. And this was one of our very, very 
initial week hive inspections and I'm seeing a lot of coming and going. That's definitely something coming in the way they're coming and going. Plus I put some one to one on here to boost them. And everybody else is coming back home. So I'm gonna get probiotics on them and go from there. I'm just going on the top of this one because the bees are all the way up in the top. It says no matter how many brew boxes, just one tablespoon. Um, that you're giving them what they need with one tablespoon. I don't know folks, it's what we're gonna try. I'm not sure how that little bit did it, but I did hear Bob Benny say he was doing double doses on some of his sickly colonies. I don't know. It has a brick on it sideways because it was a weak colony, but it doesn't look weak anymore. Well, they ate all theirs. They're plenty heavy, so I'm taking the feeder off. Feeder's coming off of this one. It was just to use up some extra syrup, stimulate them since they were weak. They weren't light, they were just weak. So, another thing with these feeders is you gotta watch because you can, uh, they got terrible spots for beetles all up in the corners. And I know the top is full of honey, so I'm going to go here over the brood nest. Oh, good looking. Yeah, now remember, this one was slid to the side, so I know my brood nest is over here. They're doing a lot better. They're doing a lot better. So that colony showing improvement is encouraging, meaning they boosted up. They've got the weight. They're better than they were. Progressing, which is good. Some of these weak ones, I'll probably go back in before we really get into our November months, and I'll double check them. So one thing to add is while I try all this stuff, I won't have anything measurable to show you because I can't tell you good, bad, or indifferent as far as is it really doing them any good. Again, another all these nests are shift to the left. I can't give you measurable results because, first of all, we've had a rough year where things are... I'm going to put the bees down in there a little bit. We've got a lot of weak and fledgling hives all of a sudden this year. And uh, I'm not going to be able to give you anything measurable on these because it's, it's hard to do that kind of stuff with products. And again, I don't just jump on products. I do my research and stuff best I can. And best I can tell is I'm, I'm doing a good thing. But I won't be able to tell you any measurable products. Like say, for example, a mite wash when we do a mite treatment. That's measurable. To do something like this, you'd have to do a couple seasons and you'd have to do controls. You'd have to have equalized hives. It'd be very, very hard to do that. So can't show you anything measurable, just knowing that I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna try it. It can't hurt, I don't think. And uh, we're gonna go from there. So I'm over at the other stand. This is what I'm seeing. The top box is pretty, pretty full, but over there, they're really, over here, they're not really that full. A lot of the nests are slid over and this one's up and down. So I'm seeing a lot of chimney with honey to the right. I'm not going through and centering all these. Um, it'd be different if we had a cruel winter that comes up usually and even if we do it's not so brutal for so long that they can't stand it. So, uh, But that's that's what I'm starting to see with the good ones. And then you have like this one at the end it's weak. Um, it's all in the top box so you know that's one to watch I got a brick turned that way so that I know watch them for feed um, because there's nothing in the bottom but we got to give them the golden rod we got to give them the golden rod and again I'm probably gonna I don't know I'm wishy-washy what I'm gonna do some could use a little bit of syrup some couldn't and I'm not gonna single feed just a few here and there uh, this early I'll do that when we get closer because everybody's got enough to survive at this point so anyway all right I'm gonna finish this one up also to give you on average what I'm seeing for brood is this is kind of what I'm seeing um, now the, the one on this other one on this stand I didn't see this it's kind of weak but it's got brood um, but this one's full of uh, cap you know this is all capped and this is uncapped and uh, it's getting dark so I put my gloves on because they're getting crawly that's what we're doing folks anyway it's getting dark I gotta hurry up So I'm seeing 
some mediocre hives showed you the one that's kind of what i'm seeing is an up and down slid to the side for whatever reason everything to that one side but i'm also seeing more weak ones than i thought i would have so i got one two three one i had to reduce had to reduce it down four four out here even the ones that aren't weak weak they're not super strong so it's going to be uh be kind of a touch and go wonder whether what might have happened to these bees uh nothing has been done different than normal but we did have a drought i mean nothing out of the ordinary this year with my management um you know pull honey a few weeks later throw some treatments to them don't necessarily feed them um because I leave plenty of honey in the boxes. So when they go into the dirt, they have plenty of bee bread and honey in the boxes. Of course, the queen slows down, but maybe with the drought, she just slowed down a lot more because I'm, like the first one we looked at, it's almost like she's just now getting started, um, which is fine. They've got a month. You know, like I said, you're talking a couple good brood cycles to come out, but it's, uh, it's not looking as good as normal. There's, there's some good ones, but... And the singles, we saw those. Had plenty of honey, not being robbed out. You know, uh, not so weak they're being robbed, but wow. Just not used to seeing it quite this bad in September. Like at the end of September, we're normally beefed back up by now and we're rolling into October with pollen and nectar coming in. So there's definitely nectar coming in. I'm seeing brood, just not seeing strength that I'd like to see. It's hit and miss, folks. It's hit and miss. But I'm going to put this on there. And I am going to go ahead and put the one-to-one -one out just to give them some hive alive. Maybe that will give them a boost. Pollen coming in. It's all we can do. It's all we can do. And just monitor. All you can do is treat for the mites. Get the loads down, which we've done. Make sure they got the food. Let the pollen and stuff come in. And monitor. Really. <laughs> This has been one heck of a year, but we'll get through. We always do, one way or another, even if we have just that many hives and we have to get through. Oh, and they got ugly. Once that sun went down, they got pretty nasty. I had to throw some gloves on and kind of got hit in the legs a couple times. Whew, they were not happy. So I'm going to finish up. I got about six more to do, and then I got enough left to go in town and do those. Hopefully those ones in town look better than this. They had nectar longer, I'm pretty sure, than these bees did. And, of course, they were all heavy. I leave all my hives heavy after harvest, so it's not like... I mean, feeding would have... You know, feeding during the dearth keeps the... And, and pollen sub keeps the queen pushing on along and pushing out a lot of eggs. Um, that that's, would have been an alternative, but I don't normally ever do that. Because I let them, I do let them dwindle, and they they go into winter small, but they they build back up in September enough to where they're still small, but they're they're good. Some of these just don't look good. You know what I mean? Ah, ah, we move on. So as I pry this off, this is our one that was so full of honey, and go into this one. Probiotics. They're on live bacteria. They're a good bacteria. We hear it about we hear about it in yogurt that we eat. It's good for our gut health because they're good bacteria. They help with the, the digestive tract. That's what we take it for that I know of. The benefits to the bees are gut health as well. And as far as this uh, this super DFM, talking to the lady, it's good for like six or seven years as long as it's in the freezer. I asked her, I said, well, what about once you open it? She said, it's good for a while, um, but if we freeze it, it's, and I forget exactly how many months she said it was good, for, or years she said it was good for, but it's good, but you got to freeze it uh, to really keep it um, good for years to come. So I'll freeze it when I'm done. I'll seal it and freeze it, and we should be good. Now, another thing with the health of these bees, you could be asking me, well, Mike, you could have put pollen patties on them, and a lot of people asked me about that with that week one. I, may, I guess I told you this in the last video, but... Just today, I'm already finding more beetles than I found all year. And, you know, they've got them cooped up and corralled. But if I give them that pollen patty, that's a breeding ground for the larvae. 
and I don't want that. And the problem with the pollen patties, when they lay on the frames, is the beetles get in there and lay the eggs. The bees don't get the eggs. The eggs hatch in the larvae burrow their way into the pollen patty on top of the frame the bees can't get to them uh, and that's where they begin to really lay their eggs and those larvae go crazy that's why you see that screen that people have they, they, one guy's been making it for years now I saw Stan Gore mentioned it on Texas friendly beekeepers but it uh, it is a hardware cloth that rides above the frames and now the beetles can lay eggs, the larvae can come out, but the bees can get them. But I can't do it on the screen and I don't have any screens. So that's why I don't boost them with pollen patties. I'll put open pollen sub out. Um, I don't feel like that's as effective, as effective, but it does help. I think a pollen sub with protein in that hive really would boost them, but I don't do it. That's one of the main reasons. That and I'm a hobby beekeeper and it's cost that I don't need to incur. But then you look at what's going on this year, how they came out of the dearth maybe I should have you know what I mean and that's how beekeeping is you always look back on what could you have done right what could you have done wrong let's hope they build the next month at least to you know good nukes and 10 frame sizes and we'll be fine there you go trying some super DFM I'm gonna put it on here maybe we can give them a boost with the hive alive and the sugar syrup as the pollen comes in the pollen will definitely give them a boost off the golden rod so if we don't even get nectar off of it we're gonna be okay um, because there's nectar coming from other sources all in all they're alive and that's what counts they're doing okay and thing with my nests coming out of dearth i will say they're usually a little bit better than this but i don't usually have booming just overflowing colonies coming out of the dearth uh, i let them build up in september and october that gives them two brood cycles to finish out you know pretty much give or take and uh, they usually boost up just fine so that's all we can do we'll see how they go but i'm pleased i mean i'm happy so I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this DFM on and let y'all go. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week to come. And may God bless you. We'll see y'all later.